we're going to do souffles. And as everyone knows, the heart of the good souffle is... Egg white, beaten egg white. And I'm going to do mine in copper. I beat it faster than the machine. Well, we're going to see if you're faster than the machine. All right. Joe. Okay. Wow. Well, One, yes. two, three, go! <laughs> Happy cooking. Bon appétit. Now, who won that contest between the man and the machine? We both did, yes. except I thought mine were better. Yeah, mine were faster and actually <laughs> better. <laughs> well, anyway, now what we're going to do, we're going to start with cheese souffle. And the souffle is just a thick sauce into which egg whites are folded. And it's the egg whites that expand as they're heated, and that makes the souffle rise. And you're going to start with the bechamel. With the bechamel. And I have three tablespoons of butter here, and I put four tablespoons of flour so on the base which we call a roux, a roux blanc. OK. And the roux, of course, on top of the roux that you cook a few seconds, I have a couple and a half of milk, which I'm going to add directly. How don't... long do you think that the roux has to cook? Well, I don't cook the roux more than like 10, 15 seconds. Some people say that then the flour is still raw. No, I don't believe that. You don't believe no. that? No, I don't believe that. I do. It, 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 you do. Yes. But you know, think of a crème pâtissière. Mm -hmm. Crème pâtissière, you beat egg yolk, sugar, mm -hmm. you put flour in it, mm -hmm. you put your boiling milk, put it back, bring it mm -hmm. to a boil and take it out. And it always tastes floury. It never tastes floury, <laughs> a crème pâtissière. <laughs> All right, okay. so this, this has to come to a boil. What I like to put in mind, I put a little bit of nutmeg. That's in. sort of a pinch, uh, isn't yes. it? and uh, a dash of salt. And the base here, as you can see on the outside here, is starting getting thick. How soon does it come to a boil? It's about ready. And the bechamel is the proportion here of almost three tablespoons of flour per cup of liquid, so it's pretty thick. A thick white sauce. Yes. Beautifully made. And we're going to do uh, cheese in it. Cheddar cheese. Good. See how it gets thick now. It has to be thick, so it'll... Yes, to hold the hold thing everything. together. Actually, we're going to put the egg yolk. It's going to thicken it even further. Now we're going to okay. do the egg whites separately. Yes. So you break your egg like this, and you separate the white from the yolk, right? Yeah. And with impeccably clean fingers. That reminds me when I was an apprentice, too. We had to clean up the And then we're going to do, shop. as you usually do, oh, you can break a few of these eggs, too, Jack. That's right. So there. here is what I do. I put them directly in there. And then I remove the yolk. I need that All the white. yolks together. Here. No, I need the yolk in there. <laughs> so in. OK, we have three, of course. Now, have... supposing you have broken the yolk, and there's some of the yolk in there, that's why I was doing them separately. Well, I am. Because you never break them. I am, I am confident. Right. OK. You do have to remove all of the white, you know? And there yeah. is a little white thing on each side, which is called the chalaza mm -hmm. of the eggs, which actually the sinew, oh. which all the yolk in suspension here in the center of the shell. Yes, you can see that very easily. Yeah. So that should be removed, too. But now, uh, supposing there's a speck of which you're so good at you never there break isn't them. There is any, yeah. Well, you know what happened? When people okay. separate the eggs with the shell, I bet you they lose almost each time about a third of the egg white. So I'm doing about five egg white here. What I want to do is to start it very fast first. And I do that to break the egg white so that it's liquid. I think if that's I a very good idea. Yeah, because if you go slowly, it's like a wet mop which goes around and it does. Mm -hmm. So now I start slowly. 
and you can hear the egg white falling on itself. And the reason is that I try not to touch the ball. There's no way you could go as fast as a machine. <laughs> okay, so it's halfway done. Yes, it is. It's going very quickly. Yeah, and then you can change hand if you get tired. Well, I think we can put the egg yolk in your bechamel if you want. You have four egg yolk there. Basically, I want that type of texture, you know. And now, you see, while Julia is finishing her stuff, I stir gently in my egg because if I don't do anything, they start breaking down very fast. So you want a little bit of the white? I'll give you a little bit of this first if you All mix right, it with your whisk. OK. OK. That's good. Mixing it with the whisk that lightened the whole mixture. And now you put it back in there. All right. That's it. And then you're going to add oh, some Oh, I don't right? like it all at once, actually, but then I like, like to put a little bit some of the, of the cheese. OK, so I start folding, and you can add cheese. That's right. Yes, it's much better doing it with two people, isn't it? Beautiful mixture. That looks See, lovely. See, the eggs are not grainy here, and that's the proper texture. Now, if you find, say, in a machine, if you beaten them too much and they've gone grainy, that I, I find if you put another raw egg it helps. yolk that's in, true. in that's it'll, true. you don't have to throw them all out. Now, what happened, you can put that in your mold, ready to go into the oven, and you can keep it for 45 minutes. But you cannot beat your egg white, leave them by themselves without anything, unless you put sugar in it to stabilize them to do a meringue. So here, you're putting a collar on yours. You're putting a collar on yours? I never yes. put collar on my souffle, but... Well, then yours don't rise high enough. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Do <laughs> you want me to butter that for you? Well, it's buttered now. We need a little... Mm -hmm. well, we're going to put a little cheese in it. All right. And well, we need to butter that, too. Yeah, OK. The cheese is right <sighs> there. You want yeah. Parmesan cheese, right? I don't care. Either one. OK, this is butter, too. This is the reason for putting cheese or breadcrumb around the sides is so that it won't stick to the sides. It'll rise And you give up. a nice, crusty... Yeah. Give a nice crusty side to it. Okay. See, that's you. very nice. No. Okay. So we put this first or the collar first? Put this that first. first. Yeah. All right. And how do you attach this? Ah. Oh, have the head sewing. of the pin down Good. for easy removal. Well, that's going to go up. Good. Should I put a bit more on top now? I would think so. We want it to rise over the... Wow, this is a big souffle. OK, we have all of it in there. Beautiful. No, it immediately goes into the oven. This is going to take, like, 45 minutes. 350 degrees, I put, right? OK, I'm finishing my bechamel I did before. Now I put my egg yolk in it. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. OK, so I put my yolk in it. It thickened a little bit. Yep. Now I'm going to do the base of the souffle with scallop, you know? We're going to do a scallop base here. And those scallop, I have a pound of scallop almost here, like three quarters mm -hmm. of a pound. I just have a little bit of butter and oil, some shallot, some And they cook some very shine. quickly. So I have beaten my... Uh, the egg in the same way, but we did it in the machine this time. And I put a little bit of there. Here. It's always very important of lightening it up. Julie, I think that I'm going to put that back into the big bowl. Here. OK. Yes, that would be easier. OK. Do you want to put the cheese for okay. me, just like you did on the other? All right. This is weirdy cheese. What kind is it? This is an English uh, cheddar. They always do things in strange ways, don't they? You think so? A little more. You like it? No. You don't like it? I like ours better. Well, so you think we should... Uh... I think it'll be all right in the souffle. OK. So the mixture here. Looks nice. The color is very pretty, I think. You're going to put that right on top. 
And then does it get anything on top of it? Uh, on top of it, I think that I'm going to put some uh, breadcrumb. I like to put some breadcrumb on top of it. Here you are. Maybe I can even mark this. Oh, yes, that'll be nice. And mark it as certain with just the side. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Oh, that's very chic. Oh. OK, a little bit of breadcrumb on top. And I'll put a little piece of the cheese on top, yes. I know you love it. Well, it's pretty. And then you can, of course, you can do that with any type of cheese. Shall we put that in the oven and see how the other one is doing? Look at our other one. Look at that one. That's coming up nicely. Wow, look at that one. If I'll put this one next to it, it's yes. going to cook a bit faster because it's flattered. I wonder how nearly done is that, do we think? I think it takes another 10, 15 minutes, in my opinion. The souffle is in the oven now. And remember, you wait for the souffle. The souffle doesn't wait for you. So when it's ready, you got to sit down and eat it. Eat. I think we're on. Let's open it up. OK. The big one we should check right away. Wow. Yep. Look at that. OK. Wait, you put it right you... there. Right here. And then one way to check is to stick a big skewer in. This one has to cook another time. And then it should come least. out fairly clean, as it has, you see. OK, now the pin's out. There we are, Jack. Beautiful, look Beautiful. at this. Beautiful. Look at that souffle. Let's admire it for a while. Done. You know, it'll stay up a little yours bit. Yours go, go higher than mine. Well, that's because we filled it very full and put a <laughs> collar on. I always start like that and In pull the it center, apart. Right. All right. Well, that looks lovely. Can't wait to taste it. See, this is perfect. The cooking here, just slightly moist in the center. Mm -hmm. Wow. And look at the size of that souffle there. Mm. And the crust, you know, is coming from the side, which is what's good. Mm. Well, it's... I think we should see if it's any good. I love, you know, I, my favorite souffle is actually cheese souffle. I love cheese. Oh, yeah. And especially It's so beer. nice for lunch with a good salad. Mm. Mm, that's delicious. I think the scallops must be ready now. Let's take it out of the oven. Yes, look oh, at wow. that. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's get it this way. I'll get this out of your way. This is an easy souffle to serve, you know, when it's in a gratin dish like this. It's easy to serve because you can actually, you know, cut mm. your portion there. Mm. And that uh, funny look che that. cheese looks very nice. It looks like orange leaves, doesn't it? Yes. And then, of course, a beautiful scallop and some juice. Mm -hmm. The bottom, you know, the scallop are there. Oh, Give me I think some that's juice. lovely. Madame? Monsieur? Shall we taste it? You want to taste those? Uh, you want to see the scallop the way they are cooked? Hmm. That's right. You're right, the scallop are not overcooked at all. No. Good. Now uh, we're going to have your famous and delicious chocolate. I think, remember in the old days, there was Dioni Lucas, a uh -huh. famous English woman who was a great French cook. And I think her signature dish was the chocolate, what do you call it, roulade or yes, roll? Yes, roulade au chocolat. Yeah. Yes, it was lovely. But Jack's is even better, I think. Well, it's moister uh, and lighter and better. Good. Now, I'm not, not that she wasn't a wonderful oh, cook, yeah. too. I want to show you now how to line up the jelly roll pan. So you fold that in four. And you cut the corner here, the open corner there. Well, now, what do we, we do? do that? Well, we take a bit of butter and we butter half of it. Mm -hmm. About half of it this yeah. way. Then we fold the one which is not buttered on top, so that it's buttered on each side. Mm -hmm. Then we open well, it. Well, that saves you from buttering it each side. Right. Nice. Now we open it. We put it buttered side down. Well, this for, is parchment for, paper. For a second. Yeah. And then you lift it up. Now it's buttered on the other side. 
and we put it really here. Really labor saving. Yes, and That's what right. happens is you see the corner, the corner, the way those things yeah. fold Is that really in the corner in? there because you cut the yeah. paper this way. So That's very it, clever. It makes a nice little casing, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's important to unmold it later on. You see, you can see that yes, corner. You better be able to unmold it. Yes. So we are ready now. So I am going to do the ganache. Okay. And ganache is really chocolate and, uh, and cream, and in equal proportion. I have a cup of cream here, and with that cup of cream, we have eight ounces of chocolate. This is a bittersweet chocolate. There is sugar in it, mm -hmm. but it's very, very good quality. And I have six egg white that I'm going to start here, and I put a tablespoon and a half of sugar directly at the beginning. At the beginning? Now, that's unusual. Yeah, that would stabilize the egg white, oh. and they hold better. So this is going to get very smooth. It does beautiful chocolate truffle with this. Mm -hmm. See, that's it. It's basically already. It's about done. Done. And it's... You don't want to let it boil. No, you don't want to let it boil. The cream was hot. When the cream is hot, it makes mm -hmm. very fast. But you have to be very careful if that you're a pro and you know how to do it. But us home people, we, stop it. we no, don't you... know all the difficulties. If yes, you really... know sometimes more than I do. <laughs> but if you let it boil, it can all thicken up. So if you want to be absolutely safe, you can put it yeah. over water, then you'll right. be absolutely safe. So that's beautiful. Right. That's just as that's smooth it. as yeah. anyone yeah, could please. want. OK, my egg white looks beautiful. And you do use a machine now and then. Oh, yes, I do, of course. I'm going to put this directly in there. And the egg whites, it doesn't hurt them at all to have hot chocolate to win. Well, I mix them a little bit with the whisk and finish it with the rubber spatula. I must say, it smells. And that smell good? Now, if this were cream, that would deflate the cream. But oh, it doesn't yes. hurt the chocolate Anything at hot, all. Yes. Well, that's a, a ganache with egg whites, so that. It's really a souffle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I could put that in the, in the oven and do a beautiful chocolate souffle. You know, I like the chocolate souffle, individual souffle, so that would be good. Mm -hmm. You could probably do about a 10, 10 individual souffle mm -hmm. with that, you know? Now, what an easy way to make a souffle. Yes, it is. And wait till you taste it. It has a moistness to it, which is just lovely. I think you like that recipe, Julia. I do. And we flatten it out a little bit here. Yeah? And you know, this at 350 degrees will cook about uh, 12 minutes, you know, in those mm -hmm. areas. It cooks pretty fast. You could do a souffle or you could do a cake, like a souffle, and let it cool off, mm -hmm. and then mold it like a flourless chocolate cake, or then you can do your roulette. There's nothing worse than a, as a title than a flourless chocolate cake. Who cares oh. whether it has flour in it or not? But it's important, it's it good. Well, that's okay. That's 12 minutes, 350 degrees. Fine. Now what? Now you're going to beat the cream for oh, me, I'm right? going to beat the cream. OK. Good. I always beat the cream over ice. I've got ice in here. Because it has got to be cold. We need one cup of cream. Then I don't ever use the machine for cream. Because uh -huh. I don't, so you want to beat as much air in as possible. I it push. really takes about, it takes a good five minutes. I put the sugar now. OK. Mm -hmm. Tablespoon and a half of sugar. And a little bit of cognac. Mm -hmm. That was like a tiny bit of vanilla in two, too. So OK, a tablespoon of cognac and then maybe... About a teaspoon of vanilla? Teaspoon of half vanilla. a teaspoon. Good. Looks good already. I'll let you beat a little bit, too. It's good for the arm. It is true. Can I take it out? As long as it's really chill. Yeah. I think the beauty of it, the important part, is that the cream is beaten with a back and forth motion much more than getting into it like the egg white. But you want to get as much air in as possible, yeah. don't you? And usually it may break down and turn into butter, you know, if you beat in it too much. But just the emulsion back and forth, you can see it being taken mm -hmm. now. And this is going to be beaten into a short TV. Yeah. And That's it. Right. In other words, it isn't stiffly beaten white cream, it's softly beaten white like cream. Like this? You think that's just about enough? Yeah. Well, I think having it cold is very important. It helps a lot, yes. And that you can beat ahead of time. You can just keep it in a bowl of ice. 
And I think yes. you'll have a, a ready yes. one. So we won't have to wait. One. He has a ready one. Which is ready there. Take it out there. And this has to be cool. What I like to do is to put a little bit of cocoa powder here, unsweetened cocoa powder. Now, if you did this ahead, could you do it overnight? If I do it overnight, or if it's summer, if it's very humid too, I may want to put a little bit of gelatin in the cream. Uh-huh. Right? I mean, melt it in. Yes, to hold it. So let's see here. Just a little layer of this. Mm-hmm. Cream. OK. So let's see. This uh, is typical of chefs. They never clean up. No, no, the I bowl. always clean. I'm going to serve that next oh, to the oh, you next are. to the, the. No, I always clean everything. I'm a, a real. So I always feel that they have a lot of minions All right, I'll put a little more on top of it. In addition, I haven't been in the kitchen, in the professional kitchen, a long time. You know, I work at home, and if I don't clean mm -hmm. anything, my wife yelled at me. So I'm very careful. OK, so we use the paper, you know, to roll it basically this way. And you know, at that point, I could put that other piece of paper underneath and keep it like that in my refrigerator ready. So here, we have to transfer this to that. And it doesn't make any difference if it cracks, it's going to cover it with We're going to powdered put a little sugar bit or something of, uh, anyway. Of cocoa powder on top here. Yeah. Yeah. So now, really, what we put on top of it here is again a little bit of unsweetened cocoa powder. I can leave some of that on my mm -hmm. tray, you know, makes a bit of a decoration. This is very easy to cut. You don't put powdered sugar on that. On the top. Oh, we could if you want. Or you could frost it if you wanted to. This is for the chef, you know, in the kitchen, yeah. you cut the end of it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you do your bûche de Noël, so it has yeah. a nice shape. OK, I'm going to give you a nice slice out of it. Well, I'm ready. Maybe. You know, it's still a little warm from the oven. Mm. And we could put, oh, maybe a little decoration, a little bit of a flowers, yes, that's... maybe a little spring of mint. Well, no, I'll see if it's any good. Mm. Me too. You need a nice sweet wine with that. It's quite light, huh? It's, it's lovely. So I've had a lot of them that are kind of dry, and this has a, a lovely moist quality to it. I did it with your help. You whipped the cream. This is really just so good, I can't stop eating it. I'll just say... Bon appétit. And happy cooking. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.